December 2002, and I'm lying down in a hospital bed, and to the left of me is a monitor that's monitoring all my vital signs, my heart rate. To the right, there's a nurse struggling to take my blood pressure. I'm recalling the last 24 hours, and I remember that I just finished well in a cross-country ski race. All the while, I was surviving on the same amount of nutrition that a rabbit would get in possibly a week. I was hospitalized for anorexia, and today, it's quite ironic that uh, I look at a piece of food like this today, like a hamburger, and I'm capable of doing this. Sorry, I was supposed to go more smoothly. It's a little dry. Point being, I'm actually one of the top competitive eaters in the world right now. Um, <laughs> getting into uh, the swing of things now. Um, an eating disorder isn't something people do by choice. They don't decide to, you know, they don't wake up one morning and uh, decide that, you know, I'm just gonna stop eating because that's a, that's a cool thing to do. No, it's, uh, it's quite the opposite. Once you actually get one, it's so hard to overcome that really, nobody really, there's so little people in this world that actually are fully able to overcome an eating disorder. Now, when I was hospitalized, I knew that I needed to be there physically. Um, I knew I needed to be there physically, but mentally I never really accepted it. It was so damn difficult to accept that I had to eat to, um, that I had to really, you know, I needed nutrition to survive. Deep down inside I knew it, but mentally it was just so hard to accept. But I looked at the big picture. I noticed how many people I actually affected along the way, how many people I actually hurt, and I was determined to change my life. I came up with this motto, uh, slogan if you want to call it, uh, it's dedicated for life. I still use it today, and whenever there's something in my life that I really want to pursue, um, or if there's something that I really want to achieve, I use this line, dedicated for life. I will never, you know, never give up um, as a result, and I'll always continue to use this line. It really took me months to fully actually start recovering after leaving the hospital. Uh, it's a big mental struggle, and I managed to tackle on and find some online communities that, you know, people that also had the same problems as me. And by the time I knew it, I was recovering, and three years later, believe it or not, I actually put on 100 pounds. Now, I was definitely happy with, you know, with what I looked like, how I felt, but mentally, I still wasn't 100% happy. Um, it took a while for that to actually happen. But going back to what I was doing with the burger over there. Um, it's quite an interesting story behind that. Um, about two and a half years ago, beginning of 2007, me and my buddies went out for what uh, a lot of university students actually do, a night of drinking. And what a lot of university students do is drink a little too much. And well, tonight, that night was not much different. I drank a little too much, woke up with painful hangovers, and we actually did what most people do, is have a greasy breakfast to actually cure that hangover. So we went to this pub in London, Ontario, and we ordered a dish called the Linebacker, which actually 
consisted of two of every kind of breakfast item you could ever think of. Pancakes, sausages, um, eggs, everything. Anyways, I managed to scarf down my entire plate before any of my buddies could finish a quarter of theirs. And I have this buddy, his name's uh, Mike Hellier, sitting in the audience today. And uh, Mike's been known to challenge people to do random things for money. And today wasn't much different. He asked the waitress what the record was for the uh, amount of those plates eaten, and it was two in an hour. I ate four. And everything took off from there. I started doing online eating contests, went around and did uh, restaurant challenges, broke every record in my path. And then about a year later, in uh, January 2008, I actually conquered what's known as the Mount Everest of competitive eating, uh, which is the 72-ounce steak. And I broke a 21-year-old record, and I managed to devour 72-ounce steak in seven minutes. The following day, I broke another world record, 18 bananas in two minutes. Within a week, uh, I was asked to actually join the pro circuit. Yes, there's a pro circuit. And uh, I was asked to come down to the Collegiate Nationals in San Diego, California, and to compete against other amazing college eaters. Um, honestly, I didn't know what to expect. I was just going for the free trip to California, and more incentive was the fact that three of my buddies tagged along. I got, to Cal I got down to uh, the Collegiate Nationals, and all my, the three buddies that came along, they got the entire crowd cheering for me. And by the time the contest was over, I ended up eating 50% more than the second place finisher. That was 18 months ago. Since then, that's my victory. <laughs> Since then, I've added, I've won another 17 contests. Um, and I haven't lost yet. So I'm uh, the only undefeated eater in the world right now. <laughs> that's quite a, I don't know, it's a pretty ironic turnaround. Uh, something you wouldn't expect from someone that used to be anorexic. Um, however, when I was reflecting on how I actually got to the hospital, you know, how I actually started an eating disorder, um, I came to realize that a year prior to being hospitalized, my father was hospitalized, my mother was hospitalized, I was told I might have cancer, and I, it was also the final year before university, so all the stress of, you know, getting good grades and getting into university. And as a 16-year-old back then, that was just a little too much, and I'm also an only child. So I was looking for something that I could actually control in my life, and I ended up using food. And I obviously took it way too far, got stricter and stricter, and didn't realize what I was doing, and eventually ended up in the hospital, like you saw other pictures, at 120 pounds. When I started reflecting on this time, I wasn't really thinking about my eating disorder. I was thinking about why I couldn't control anything um, during that time what I couldn't do, why, you know, why I chose food of all things. And I started thinking about, you know, all my parents' issues. And my mom had actually been uh, diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, uh, MS. That's what I'm going to be referring to, uh, I'm going to be using MS from now on. Um, and at that time, I didn't look into it, I didn't read about it or anything like that. Um, I just, I was obviously focused on my not eating. And however, now that I am actually healthy, I've read books and books, and I've, you know, I've learned what was actually wrong with my mom and what MS was. And I've realized that the, first, the number one cure or number one stabilizer out there uh, for MS is actually exercise. And seeing as I was really into it, and that's what actually changed my life and saved my life, I kept pushing my mom towards the gym, and I still do that every day. But that wasn't enough. Um, I have started doing MS walks, started doing charity, charity work, and now recently started doing eating stunts for it. I did uh, about six months ago, actually, ate every meal, every value meal off the McDonald's menu in under 30 minutes. Yeah, remember, this, remember the movie Super Size Me? Yeah, that was, uh, it was that movie condensed into 30 minutes. 
yeah, it wasn't pretty. It wasn't pretty. I felt sick for three days after. And, ugh, that was probably the worst moment ever. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it, it, it was all for a good cause, right? And uh, it's my mom working out. She still does that. She's in the audience today. It's one of my heroes. But yeah, so uh, just, I started doing all this stuff for MS, and I realized that this was, wasn't something I can control, but uh, it's something that I could definitely help out with and not let it manifest into all of my previous struggles. Now, as you can tell, my story's kinda, kinda out there. It's like, I don't know if you've ever heard of somebody going from anorexia to one, a pro eater, or one of the best eaters in the world now, I've, I've been called. Um, and it's allowed me to, you know, not only show that I'm an amazing eater, but it's allowed me to actually share my story. And what I really want to, I don't know, pass, pass across to actual people that are struggling, or if you know someone that's struggling, is the fact that you waste so many years of your life just thinking about food and nothing but nothing else. You can't get those years back. I think about it today even, how many years I wasted. I, in grade 12, I didn't go to any parties. I missed prom. I, in first year university, I sat in my room and I went to maybe like one or two parties. I don't remember anything from that time. Physically, I was there. Mentally, I was thinking about what I should eat next, what I can't eat, um, that I'm not welcome with these people, I'm not good enough. And, you know, the reality was that I was, and nobody really, you know, should be able to tell you that you're not good enough, and it's just, you have to realize that it, I know how hard it is to overcome somebody that is facing an eating disorder. It's the one of the most difficult things, but people need to realize that the only way to really overcome it is through support and help, and it's almost impossible to do it on your own. Now, people think that, uh, that, you know, I've been able to overcome all these crazy obstacles, go from one extreme to the other, but I still struggle today. I mean, even helping my mom with MS, um, you know, I do charity stunts, I do research, I do reading. But, you know, I still see my mother struggling from day to day. You know, fatigued to get out of bed. Um, you know, having trouble remembering something. Sometimes even trouble remembering who I am. And you think, all this effort, all this research that you're doing, is it really for nothing? Like, why am I doing it? It's, it's not helping her. But you can never think like that. Because it might not help today, it might not help in a week, but maybe one day it will. And so you always got to, you know, keep thinking positively and never give up. And that, you know, and today's theme, as we all know, is determination. And I know you guys did, uh, did a little event, you know, group, group work during, uh, during one of the breaks on determination and discussing what it is. And personally, I think my entire life is based around determination. I've been able to overcome an eating disorder. Um, I've been able to recognize certain issues. I've been able to help out with my mom and like other people. And I've been able to s spread my message and you know, overcome all these mental struggles. And it makes you realize that really nothing's impossible in this world. You just have to stay determined enough, dedicated enough, and that's why I live by the motto of dedicated for life. Thank you.